And amen, amen. Good, good afternoon, good evening. Uh, saints of God, welcome to the city, the city of David's, our three nights revival. We had a, uh, a, a good starting with uh, Brother Benjamin, young Benjamin. He taught on coming out of darkness into the light. And then yesterday, uh, we challenge you to stay, keep up the pace uh, that, so that you would win. Uh, and so tonight we have the finale, the Grand Slam coming from our, none other than our own pastor, Dana Jones. And, and so if you have not been filled today, you're getting ready to be filled tonight with the Word of God. We're going to open up with uh, scripture and then prayer, and then we're going to go into our praise and worship. Uh, the scripture reading tonight, again, is coming from uh, the book of Psalms, the thir 113th number of Psalms. It says, Praise ye the Lord, praise, O ye servants of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord from this time forth and forevermore. From the rising of the sun unto the going down of the same, the Lord's name is to be praised. The Lord is high above all nations and his glory above the heavens. Who is like unto the Lord, our God, who dwelleth on high, who humbleth himself to behold the things that are in the heaven and in the earth? He raises up the poor out of the dust and lifteth the needy out of the dunghill, that he may set him with princes, even with the prince of his people. He maketh the barren woman to keep house, house and to be a joyful mother of children. Praise ye the Lord. Again, praise ye the Lord. One more time. Praise ye the Lord. Dear Heavenly Father, we just bless your name and we praise you right now for being such an awesome God. Lord, you didn't have to wake us up this morning, but you did. And we say thank you, oh God. Lord, you didn't have to allow us to be in our right mind, but you did. And we say thank you, Lord. God, we just praise you, oh God, for the work of your hands, oh God. Lord, you kept us all day long, oh God, as we traveled up and down the day dangerous highways, oh God. Lord, you kept us from the sun as it shined through the day, oh God. You kept us dehydrated, oh God, refreshed, oh God. Lord, we love you and we praise you, oh God. You kept our loved ones, our children, our spouses, oh God. Lord, thank you. Hallelujah, oh God. Lord, you, if, you doesn't, if you don't do anything else, oh God, you have already did enough, oh God. You have proven that you are the God of God. You are the King of kings. You are the Lord of Lords. You are our provider. You are our way maker. You are the promise keeper. And we say thank you, oh God. Lord, we love you for who you are, oh God. We love you for what you do for us and why you have done it for us, oh God. When you went to Calvary, we say thank you, oh God. Lord, you gave us the opportunity to repent, oh God. And and we did joyfully, oh God. But Lord, if we have did anything wrong, oh God, that you would forgive us, oh God. That you would throw our sins in the sea, sea of, of forgiveness, oh God. Of forgetfulness, oh God. Lord, that you would cover us, oh God. Loose here, loose here, loose here. That you would cover us, oh God. Uh, cover us, oh God. Lord, that you would set us free, oh God. Uh, that we would praise you with our members, oh God. That we we will lift up our voice, oh God, and that we will give you praise, oh God. Lord, that we would realize, oh God, we're still in the race, oh God. We're still in the fight, oh God. God, you said that if we would hang in there, oh God, that we would win, oh God. And God, that you would strengthen us, oh God. Encourage us, oh God, to continue to fight, to continue to run, oh God. Encourage us, oh God, 
God. Strengthen us, oh God. Lord, that we would fail not, oh God. Lord, send your word, oh God, through the man of God. Send your word, oh God, through the man of God. Send your word, oh God. I'm refreshing right now, oh God. I'm renewing right now, oh God, that you would bless, oh God. That you would answer prayers, oh God. Lord, that you would allow us, oh God, to walk in your peace, oh God. And we will forever praise your name. We will forever give you glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank God. Thank God. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Jesus, I'll never forget what you've done for me. Jesus, I'll never forget how you set me free. Jesus, I'll never forget how you brought me out. Jesus, I'll never forget, no, never. How can I forget what you've done for me? How can I forget how you set me free? How can I forget how you brought me out? Jesus, I'll never forget. No, never. Okay, hold up, hold up, hold up. Now, I know my voice is cracking and everything, but I'm going to need some help. And we need we can do that just a little bit better. Amen. We can do that just a little bit better. Okay. <clears throat> Jesus, I'll never forget what you've done for me. Jesus, I'll never forget how you set me free. Jesus, I'll never forget how you brought me out Jesus I'll never forget no never how can I forget what you've done for me how can I forget how you set me free how can I forget how you brought me out Jesus I'll never forget no, never. Amen. Amen. I, I think we're getting warmed up here. We, we, I think we're getting there. We're getting there. Yeah. Hallelujah. Uh, uh, I, let me find another song, and, you know, because I, I still feel a praise. You know, we don't want the man of God coming up here, uh, 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 you know, and we still wet. Our wood is still wet. We need to kind of get it just a little bit soggy, I mean, on fire for him. We get, need to get this killing. I'm a soldier in the army of the Lord. I'm a soldier in the army. I'm a soldier. In the army of the Lord, I'm a soldier in the arm. I got my war clothes on in the army of the Lord. I got my war clothes on in the arm. I got my war clothes on in the army of the Lord. I got my war clothes on in the arm. I'm a soldier in the army of the I'm a soldier in the army. I'm a soldier in the army of the Lord. I'm a soldier in the army. If I die, let me die in the army of the Lord. If I die, let me die in the army. If I die, let me die in the army of the Lord. If I die, let me die in the army. I'm a soldier in the army of the Lord. I'm a soldier in the army. I'm a soldier in the army of the Lord. I'm a soldier in the army. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Yeah, there you go. In the army of the Lord. In the army. In the army of the Lord. In the army. Yeah. In the army of the Lord. In the army, I'm fighting for my life. 
in the army of the Lord. In the army, in the army of the Lord, in the army, in the army of the Lord, yes, in the army, in the army of the Lord, in the army. In the army of the Lord, in the army, in the army of the Lord, in the army, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I don't know uh, if you was wanting to be entertained, you did not pay for your tickets. And so we didn't entertain you. We were praising the Lord because I was, I heard in the word that God, he wants our praise. He inhabits our praise. And so when we praise and worship God, it's not the same as us. somebody saying, oh yeah, that's right or that's not right. Anytime you open your mouth to give God glory, God receives it. And you know, our prayer is that God would see our hearts and that he would see our sacrifice sacrifice of praise. Amen. Amen. When you clap your hands and lift your hands, you're giving God an offering. Oh, yeah. Every time you say, yes, Lord, uh, amen and hallelujah, you're giving God an offering. And now we've been to uh, not prolong the hour because there is a word that needs to be said tonight and we're going to bring up none other than the speaker of the hour, uh, our own Pastor Dana yeah. Jones. God bless you. Praise God. Somehow, 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 gotta make it on this journey. Somehow, 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 gotta make it on this journey. Somehow, well, the devil's on my track and he's trying to keep me back. Gotta make it on this journey. Somehow, somehow. Somehow, gotta make it on the journey somehow. Well, the devil's on my track, trying to keep me back. Gotta make it on this journey somehow, somehow, somehow. Is that cold? Gotta make it on this journey somehow. Well, the devil's on my track, and he's trying to keep me back. I got to make it on this journey somehow, 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 make it on this journey somehow, well the devil's on my track and he's trying to keep me back, got to make it on this journey somehow, praise God, amen, thank you Jesus, praise God, amen, I'm a soldier in the army of the Lord. And I got to make it on this journey somehow. Praise God. Amen. I don't know and I can't figure it out. But some way, somehow, God is going to make it happen. Somehow. Praise God. Amen. He might have to kill a few folk. And he might have to detour some things in my life. Praise God. But somehow. I got to make it on this journey. Hell or high water, sink or swim. I got to make it on this journey somehow praise the lord amen we thank and praise god for being here on tonight thanking god for another day praise the lord amen god has been good to us yes, yes. and i'm shouting glad at what god is doing in my life i thank the lord praise god for what he's yes. done in my life praise god i guess i can't testify for nobody else but myself but god has been good to me praise god amen yes. and we pray that we would make Amen. An impact tonight. Praise the Lord. Through the word of God. Amen. Mighty word. Praise God. All week long. Praise God. I should say Wednesday and Thursday. Amen. Coming from Brother Benjamin. Praise God. And then from Elder Harrison. And so we've had quite a time. 
Praise God. Amen. We had quite a time in the word of God. And so believe it or not, I don't care what you say. It was the word of God that delivered me. Mm, it was the word of God that delivered me. Praise God. I'm sorry, but it wasn't in the song. I, I met Sister Jones uh -huh, at a musical one night, but that, that didn't save me. Praise God. It, it wasn't the felodious uh, 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 voices of the choir that saved me, but it was the preaching of the gospel. Woo! My God, that came in one day and touched my life. And God said, I can be free. And so today, tonight, praise God, amen, we're going, amen, over to the word of God. Romans, the eighth chapter, and the verses 35 through 39, and believe it or not, I hope you have your pencil and a piece of paper, because I believe that this is going to help you, help someone, help all of us, praise God, on tonight, yes, praise God, amen. Romans, the eighth chapter, uh, I'm going to start at 31, if you don't mind. Romans, the eighth chapter, beginning at verse 31 through 30. Nine. What shall we say then to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? That's a question. He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all. How shall he not with, with him also freely give us all things? It's a question. Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? Another question. It is God that judgeth. Mm -hmm. Justifieth, I'm sorry. Justify. It is God that justifieth. Who is he that condemneth? Another question. It is Christ that died. Yea, rather, uh -huh, that, uh, that is risen again. Who is even at the right hand of God? Who also maketh intercession for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Another question. Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? He asks another question. As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Mm -hmm. Nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading and to the hearers of our word. God, we thank you today and we bless your name. We thank you for your awesome word that's presented to us tonight. We ask God that you would help us, that we might empty out, that you might empty in. Fill our cups to overflowing, oh God. Don't just fill it up. Overflow it tonight, God. Let it run down the front and the back and the side. Underneath, oh God, let it run and let it flow. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Thank God. Amen and amen. Uh -huh. Our theme this week has been a challenge to win. A challenge to win. Mm -hmm. And as you can tell, we started off by trying to be flashy. We had on our jerseys representing a sports team. Mind you, Paul talked about sports a lot believe it or not, in the word of God. And so here, uh -huh, there is a challenge to win. To win what? N uh, not the gold medal, but it's a challenge that we might win eternal life. Right, right, amen. Mm -hmm. This is not Oh, uh, my God, this is not a carnal challenge. Woo! My God, this is a spiritual challenge. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're remembering my days of running track. Praise God, that was a carnal uh -huh, race. Praise God. But, but in order to win, uh -huh, you, you've got to go through some grueling things. There's a young man at my job, and I think he did the Iron Man. And so when you do the Iron Man, you got to go through some grueling stuff uh -huh, to even uh, find yourself coming across the finish line 
when you talk about an Iron Man, I think there was another young man who did the same thing. And so when you talk about a challenge to win, uh, Ella Harrison mentioned it the other night, who signs up to lose? Who signs up that, you know, even the kid that is really not athletic wants an opportunity to play. Yeah, every, everybody wants to win. Everybody wants to be a part uh -huh, of the team. Yes, Paul comes back and tells us that uh, there is therefore no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who what? Walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. This is not carnality. This is a spiritual race. Yes. Mm -hmm. The song says, somehow, I, I got to make it. That somehow, I, I, I've got to out my God. I, I've got to outmaneuver the devil. Right. And we waiting, God, waiting for God to do all the work. But, but, but what are you going to do that you might win the prize? Yeah. I, I, I want to win the prize. And uh, I want to make it to that day that when I breathe my last breath, that uh -huh, I would stand before my maker. My yeah. God. Woo! My God, I want to hear him say, well done. You fought a good fight and you didn't give up. And in spite of uh, those things that came against you, you kept pressing forward toward the mark of the high calling of God, which is in Christ Jesus. My God, my God, uh, a challenge to win. Here in this challenge, I realize that there is that kid uh -huh, on the bench. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. There, there's that kid uh -huh, that uh, desires to play. But, but I like this challenge and I, I like this, uh, 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 I don't want to call it a game, but, but, but I like this opportunity that I have to win. Why? Oh my God, can you see it? There's an even playing field, my God, that's going on right now. Doesn't matter if you're heavy and doesn't matter if you're skinny. And don't matter if you're sick and don't matter if you're well. And don't matter if you don't have legs. But this is an even playing field. God says I have no respect of a person. Yes, uh -huh. That's what he said. My God. So here, here, here you got to get the visual of it. Everybody can play in this game. Amen. Amen. But some just don't want to play in the game. I like the analogy that Elder Harrison brought the other day, and, and I, I understood what he was saying, but I don't know the terminology, but isn't that something to run all the bases? And the umpire says at base one, no, you didn't get it. You, you ran well, but what hindered you, buddy? You, you didn't make it. You got ahead of the game and you didn't pay attention to the rules in the, in the book and all of a sudden you thought that you could head off God, but it don't work that way. That's right. wow. Bible declares and it talks about uh, our name. Let me slow down. Written in the Lamb's yeah. Book of Life. Yes. Yeah. Is our name written in the Lamb's Book of Life? Life. Life. We must first Understand if we are even in the game. Jesus said in the word of God, he said, search the scriptures for in them, the, the, the rule book, in them you think you have eternal life. What Jesus was really saying was you need to look at the word. Uh -huh. And the word is going to find you out. Look at the word. You, you, you get angry at the preacher and you get angry at the missionary, but what you really need to do is be like Michael Jackson and go have a talk with the man in this mirror and say, where, where am, am I in the faith or not? Have a discussion with Jesus and have a little talk with Jesus. Uh -huh. It'll make things right, all right, because you're trying to figure it out in your finite mind, but, but God has a system and he's hooked it up all together different than what we think. Why? The Bible says the foolishness of preaching. It's foolishness to the world. Yes, yes, it's just foolishness. Wait a minute. Hold it. You, 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 you throw your hands up? 
to a God that you cannot see. It's just words on the page. But I want to let you know that it's living and it's breathing yeah. word of God. And, and if you will allow him to, if you would empty out and allow him to come in, he'll show you how he'll move, breathe within you. He'll show you how he can operate without you. Because what happens is, is uh, when you start looking at the challenge to win, you think you can just go out on the field and do it. I, I remember in, I guess I can talk about this, I remember in lifting weights, and we always had that 300 club. You, you had to hit 300 to be somebody. And so I struggled a long time. My friend back home, Elder Bennett, I struggled a long time to hit 300. But when I hit 300, boom, man, I was like, I was in the club. Yeah. But mind you. It took some time to get there. I had to work them weights and work them weights and work them. It wasn't just one day either. I had to work them for a good while in order for me to just go, bam. But all of a sudden, we want to come in overnight and think we got it just like that. I understand what the scripture says. But there is some praying that has to go on. And there, there are some fasting that have to go on. You, you t show me a person that don't like to pray and there's a problem. Houston, we have a problem. The disciples had the uh, colossal nerve to say, Jesus, teach us to pray. And, and then the average one of us, oh, well, I don't what did Ella Harrison say the other day? He said, I, have, I never heard nobody say, well, Lord, give me a double anointing. We just say, give me. But are you willing to do the neology to get it? Uh, are you willing to turn over your plate to get it? Because it takes something to win in this challenge. You, you're not going to just walk up here and say, I got it like that. No, you don't. Time is running out. The Bible says, or not the Bible, but, but in, in my in my research and looking at this and uh, understanding a challenge to win, first of all, I want to let you know that I'm in it to win it. I've been in it to win it. Since Jones, it's been a long time. Uh, I think I got saved when I was 26 years old, and I'm still in it to win it. Here he talks, we talk about challenge. Challenge, this is a noun here. It talks about test. talks about trial. The verb talks about dare, defy, confront, to face, be brave, face up to opposition, or face, face up to, oppose, argue. When you talk about challenging, there's a challenge going on. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. I challenge you. Mm -hmm. don't, 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 don't mess with me because I, I've given my life to this and all of a sudden you're going to muster in and you're going to try to pull the wool over my eyes. Oh, the devil is a lie. We, we ain't going for that. I, I've been doing this too long and so uh, the challenge is, come on, let's see you defy. Like David said, come on, let me see you defy the armies of this God. Right, 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 right. Lion wonder you. Yes, sir. Yeah. Then we go and we talk about when. It says be successful or victorious in yeah. a contest or a conflict. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Acquire, you know, uh, uh, most boys, I don't know about girls, some girls do, uh, we like karate. Uh -huh. and, you know, that's a, they ain't nothing but a good fight there. They're like, yeah. boom, boom. Uh, and then sometimes you sitting there, yeah, you sitting there at the, on your desk, at your chair. Well, not my desk, don't y'all tell nobody. <laughs> you, you sitting there on your chair, and you sitting there going, pop, pop, pop. Right, right. <laughs> And so we want to be successful and be victorious in this conflict. It says, acquire to secure as a result of a contest, a conflict, or other endeavor, whatever it is. I want to gain and I want to achieve. I want to attain. I want to earn. I want to obtain. I want to acquire. When I was studying for my A plus uh, to become a technician, way back when, but uh, I still had to study for it. And, and so I went and studied, and there was two parts to the test. And I went in, and I was so nervous. And, 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 and I passed the first one, and I was so happy. I'm like, praise God. 
Then I went back, I think the next day or a day or so uh, after that, and I passed the other one. I was so happy. I, I was so elated. But why? Because it was something that had bought, it was presented to me as a challenge. And I said, this is what I want, and this is what I want to do. And I don't know how to do nothing else, but, but this is the challenge. And in the challenge, I came out, praise God, victorious. Give God the glory for the victories in my life. Amen. Now here, some of us, when the Bible talks about here, what shall separate us from the love of God? Actually, uh, if, I could, if I could work this, uh, there's nothing that should be able to separate us from God's love. Now, let me hear what I'm going to say. That, that God loved us so much, he says he loved the whole world. Yes, sir. But like I always say, let's flip the script on it tonight. What would cause you to walk away from God and to lose your reward? The challenge is, is that we might continue in the faith. Jesus said, be thy faithful unto death. But here Jesus had a moment. Somebody else going to have a moment too, so y'all hold on. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Jesus had a moment with his disciples. Uh -huh. Here in John 6, 65 through 68, St. John 6, 65 through, I believe it's 68. We have to really look at the scripture because Jesus is always, always challenging us whether or not we're going to follow him or not. We all have the choice. And I like it because even if you go back to the beginning of time, God gave them instruction. Here it is, Elder Harrison. You talked about it. Yes, he gave them instructions, specific instructions for them to follow. Right, right. We today have instructions that we still have to follow. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen. Here in St. John, he says, and he said, this is Jesus talking, Therefore said I unto you that no man can come unto me except it were given unto him of my father. Check it. And it says, uh, from that time, many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. Come on, this is the word of God. Uh, 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 this is not uh, 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 an analogy that I, I drummed up in my head to, to coincide with the scripture or proverb. This is Jesus talking. Amen. And he's talking to us. We, we say we're in the game. And so Jesus uh, uh, comes back and he says this in 66. He says, then said Jesus unto the twelve. And you put your name there. Then said Jesus unto Dana and Catherine and Benjamin and Dania and Deja. Then Jesus said unto the twelve, Will ye go away? Will ye also go away? Uh -huh. That's a question, right? Jesus just let them know that uh, the Father is going to call you. And everybody said, Well, I'm the call of the Lord. Well, where you at? I mean, I know we keep talking about it, but, but, but it's an evident fact that where is everybody at after COVID? Where, where are the mighty men and women of God? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Then Simon Peter answered him, Lord, it is to whom shall we go? Thou hast the words of eternal life. Come on, those that are in the game and those that, come on, those that accepted the challenge. Yes, Lord, I want to live for you. Who shall go for us? And who shall go and proclaim the God? Lord, here I, am, send me. here I am, send me. They turned their back on Christ. And he says they didn't walk with him any longer. They missed their training, and they didn't, they didn't really hang out with Jesus. So <laughs> Thank you. Woo! They didn't hang out with Jesus so they could finish the course. <laughs> they, they left prematurely, and they didn't really get the substance of Jesus. And so all of a sudden, they just walked away. They, just walked away. they gave up in the middle of class. Yes, 
Uh, I can't do this, and I, I, I'm not going to do this. And, and that's just uh, uh, revealing that you in your flesh when you think you're going to follow God. Because God is calling, and when God calls you, uh, it, it, it behooves us that we would be sincere with God. Yeah. That when he calls us, you say, God, here am I, send me. Yeah. To win will cause you to follow those with prior training and experience. Yeah. How are you going to win? Somebody said... You know, it's a true statement. I understand the concept. In order to be a good leader, you got to be a good follower. Who are you following? Well, let me tell you one scripture that comes to mind even right now. The blind lead the blind, and they both fall into the... Who are you following? What game you in? Or let me say this. What game you playing? Well, there's a whole lot of folk. They just playing the game. Uh -huh. Jesus talked about it. This will bag me up. Wolves in sheep clothing. You just want to play the game. Here in Romans 5, 1 through 5, he says, Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom also we have access by faith into his grace, wherein we stand and rejoice in hope. To the glory of God. And not only so, but we glory, come on, in tribulation. Also knowing that the tribulation worketh patience. And patience experience. And experience hope. And hope maketh not a shame. Because the love of God is shared abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost. Which is given on to us. That's why the Holy Ghost is so needed in our walk. Amen. That, come on, the love of God might be what? Shared abroad in our hearts. Yeah. I know Jesus said, uh, uh, you know, uh, let the wheat and the tear grow together. I understand that. But it's a shame. And I think I'm going to talk about it. How we treat one another in the church. And, and it's a shame to have to watch a video and folk talking about the church and it, it just makes me uh, uh, my, my mom would say bitter is gone it just it makes me upset because this is a great church and I'm not just talking about coaching I'm talking about the church of God this is a great place to be and it's an honorable place to be and God cares about us and he loves us and all of a sudden the world comes back and says I seen sister cornbread drunk and then she testified on Sunday. I seen Mr. Cornbread drunk right. down at the mall. And all of a sudden, he want to tell you all about God. Mm. You're about to trip over your own feet. Mm -hmm. Challenge to win. Challenge to win. The, the, we've been challenged with a great task that we might win the prize and win the crown. I was thinking the other day, and it, it's a shame how uh, you got to tell, saints got to go around talking about, well, don't judge, don't judge. You better judge me. I want you to watch my life. Praise God. Watch me. Uh, 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 look at me. Praise God. Amen. Watch my life and how I live. I want you to see something because I've seen something in the Word. I've seen something so awesome that it, it causes me to forsake all for Jesus. Bible declares that uh, we have to uh, 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 bear our cross daily. Daily? daily. Yeah, Monday, Tuesday, daily. Uh, midnight, 3 a.m. We got to bear our cross daily. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Here, as I begin to look, and I thought about uh, some individuals, and one I did not know about, but one I did, and I just thought I would throw this in here. I remember, uh, again, uh, Sister Joan shaking her head at me, uh, when running track and, uh, in San Jose, and uh, I was a freshman, and then, uh, then a sophomore, I think I was in my junior year. And in my junior year, uh, I was running a 100-yard dash, 10-2. But then there was a senior running the 100-yard dash in a 9-9. Brother man was fast, but, 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 but I was in the game, and I, and I was determined, praise God, amen, to get to a 9-9. Uh -huh. 
I want her to be up there. I mean, a 10 too is, is you know, you, you could blink, you know, but but I was trying not to blink because I wanted a 9-9, nine, nine, but, but a 10 2 wasn't bad. I could hold my own with a 10 2. But here I looked and I researched this. It says uh, Usain Bolt ran a 9.23 in 2006. Then he ran a 9.29 in 2012. Brother man was getting it. That's what that means. Right, right. He was getting it to the point. And some folks see them on TV, but it's different when you're running it yourself. He was blowing smoke. Wow. The same with our lives. Right. There's a challenge to win. And when you're challenged to win this thing, you got to blow some smoke. I'm not talking about trying. You know how you know how they do in the church today. One trying to be better than the other. No, it's not one being the better than the other. But I want to let you know. I heard some songs that I'm outrunning the devil. I'm going to outrun him. Why? Because I'm going to be fast on the draw, and I'm going to be fast on the gun, and I'm not going to look back, and I'm not going to waste time. I'm going to keep my eye to the prize of the high calling of God, which is in Christ Jesus. I got to keep my eyes on the finish line. Yes, I believe that and I feel like I've been challenged to win. You, have you know how it is when, when individuals tell you, oh, they ain't going to last long. <laughs> they ain't going to be here long. Yes, it's so-and-so saved. Yeah, they say, oh, it ain't going to last long. Mm -hmm. You know, that's how the devil does. The devil does. But you, 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 you got to make the devil out of a liar. Amen. Mm -hmm. You got to make him out of a lie that I'm going to win this challenge. That's right. That's right, preacher. Because like you said the other night, it is a fixed fight. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We already have the victory, but, but when you don't make it, it's because you're not putting your uh, nose to the grindstone. It's because you're not giving it an effort. You're, you're not surrendering to God. You, you want it overnight, and you want flashy things, but the, baby, this ain't flashy. This is a lonely walk, and, and this is a heartbreaking walk. You, you got to continue in this. And you just want to be liked by everybody. I'm sorry, baby, but it don't happen like that. Jesus was not well liked. He said, if they hated me, they're going to hate you. Hello, wake up, somebody. In June 21st, 1963, Bob Hayes, uh, a, star, a star, sturdy running back, sprinter from Florida A&M, he runs a 9-1, seconds in the 100-yard dash, mm -hmm. uh, to uh, 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 not once but twice. At the AAU, I remember those, the AAU National Track and Field Competition in St. Louis. I always love going to the big meets because you got folk from everywhere all over the country. And you, you, just, you just waiting for your turn and you just stretching, you just waiting for your turn. That's how it should be in the house of God. We pull back so much in the house of God. Yeah, well, no, I, 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 that ain't my calling. No, no, no. Yeah. Uh, your calling is to minister the word of God to the lost. Help us, preacher. That's it. First Corinthians 9, 24 through 27. He says, uh, know ye not that they which run in a race. Here it is. Run all. Mm -hmm. yeah. First Corinthians 9 and 24. But one receiveth the prize. Paul says, so run that ye may, come on, this is part of the words I, I quoted, obtain. obtain. Run so that you might obtain. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And every man that striveth for the mastery is, 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 is temperate in all things. Now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown. I told you this is not fleshly. But we an incorruptible crown. We want an incorruptible crown. Yeah, yeah. Most folk, they want to be, they want you to, you know, talk about me now. Give me my crown now. Everybody want a crown now. But what about tomorrow? What about the afterlife? 
Uh -huh. He says, therefore, he says, there, he says, I therefore so run. This is Paul. Not as uncertainly. Some folk run in this race, they're not, they not certain about what they have. They wonder where, whether they say, huh? Am I saved? And I, I don't feel that. Baby, you, you need to feel something. Every once in a while, Pastor Macklin used to say, he that sitteth on the red hot stove shall rise again. What he was saying that every now and then there should be some flames of fire. That, that should something touch you with a little excitement. That you, you should want to blow the horns in Zion because why? You're saved and sanctified. Filled with the precious gift of the Holy Lord. Every now and then. He says, I therefore so run, not as uncertainly, so fight I, not as one that beateth the air. You know, th this is not uh, shadow box, and we want a shadow box. You ain't, you ain't doing nothing. I mean, you know, it, you might be getting a little exercise, but you ain't really fighting nobody. Right, right. You know, uh, Elder Harrison talked about putting on the whole armor of God. When you put on the whole armor of God, baby, you ready. I'm ready for war. I'm ready for the devil. I'm ready to fight the good fight of faith. Yeah, it's not going to always be good every day, but there are some days you got to wake up ready to fight. You, you got to wake up ready, amen, to slice that devil up. Why? Because you're coming in a winner. Yes, sir. You've been challenged to win. And Paul goes on to say the 27th verse, he says, but I keep under my body. I bring it into subjection. Paul says, I'm in control of my body. Though my body want to do other things, I bring it under subjection. I make it do what it's supposed to do according to the word of God. Mm -hmm. He says, uh, lest that by any means, when I have preached to others, I myself should be a castaway. For want to preach and talk about this and that. What happens in the dead of night? What happens at 3 o'clock in the morning? What, what, what happens when you're all alone by yourself? And, and are you really, really ready to fight? Do you count yourself in the game and the dead of night? Do you count yourself in the game when challenges come upon you? Praise God. I, I was encouraged the other day by my son. I was encouraged by him the other day. Several things had really come up against him, and he was so cool, calm, and collective. I was impressed with my son the other day. I'm like, look at this dude. In the face of adversity, all this stuff going on. Now, I'm not, I don't know what he did behind his closed doors. He didn't complain one time. He didn't gripe one time. He said, Daddy, I just got to do what I got to do. I said, wow, what, what a trooper. What a real trooper when you, when you understand that, that you are in this thing to win it. And you can say, hell or high water, sink or swim. When you can have the intestinal fortitude to say, okay, God, that didn't work. What's plan B? B didn't work. What's plan C? Where do I go from here, God? You got to be bold enough to say, God, what do I do next? Right. It's okay for us to say, well, this is what I think. But God, you, you have the end result here. Yeah. Amen. Here when we are calling ourselves as, as we are challenged to win, we have to realize that uh -huh, we can't just do anything to win. Right. Right. It's not about us, but it's about God. This Ella Harrison made it known uh, last night that we have this rule book. And in this rule book, uh, it's God that's making the rules. You can't go to the NFL or the NBA and, and tell them how to change the rules. You may not like it. I remember one game I was watching some football, some, uh, uh, some game, I, I forgot the name of it, but it was, I think, kids playing. And they were getting upset. And then the coach said, take the ref out of the game. Take the ref out of the game. 
But 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 he's lying. He, he he he's not telling the truth, and he's calling false cause. Well, make him work for it. Take the ref out of the game and take the devil out of the game. And if you focus your eyes on heaven and you depend on God, God will allow you to win. But we're so busy like Peter looking at the waves. We find ourselves sinking from day to day. And why am I not getting ahead? Because I'm looking at the waves and I'm taking my eyes off God. Hmm. Here, when we look at another passage of scripture that uh, we look at mm, Matthew's 22, and I, I love this scripture uh, because this scripture talks about uh, the marriage feast. I love this because uh, God has prepared everything for us. You know how we say, come over here for the table is spread and the feast of the Lord is going on. Amen. Amen. But then you got some folk that want to come over and they don't want to do nothing. Right. Come on, baby, we're going we to serve. Why? Well, I got to serve. Well, come on, baby, we're going to clean up. Why? Well, I got to clean up. Right. But when it comes time to start dishing out stuff, you want to be first in line. Right. You entitled. You ain't entitled. Right. Here, when you, look at the, when you look at the marriage feast, you find it that a king had prepared a marriage in Matthew 22. And he prepared a marriage and he said, come on. Everything is spread. The table is spread. I want you to go out and I want you to ask everybody, come to this marriage feast. Right, right. Come to this marriage feast. Didn't I say it was an open playing field? Yes, sir. Nobody left out? Yes, sir. So he says, I want everybody, be it everybody to this wedding because we're going to have a glorious time. Yeah. And we're going to shout a little while and we're going to eat a little bit and, and we're going to have an amazing time. And the king said, surely with all the noise I hear, uh, let me use my, my imagination, surely with all the, uh, the noise that's going down downstairs and everybody having a good time and I'm so glad that I could give back to my community and so let me go and see the people. I want to see the smiles upon their face and I want to see them rejoicing and, and eating good. I want to give back to what God has done for me. And all of a sudden, he goes down downstairs and he faced this fella like some of us he comes downstairs and he noticed a young man a young woman not changed in their wedding garments not prepared for the wedding I've spent all this money and I've spent all this time so everybody should be good and fit to go. It says, and when the king came to see the guests, he saw there a man which had not a wedding garment. And he said unto him, friend, how comest thou in hither not having a wedding garment? And he was speechless. Now, let me find a good word. Uh, Mr. It's the nicest I can get. Mr. Cornbread, Miss Cornbread, you sitting down uh -huh, on yourself. And you know how you get. Well, they're going to just take me as I am. Wait a minute. Baby, it ain't going down like that. In this game, God calls the shots. It's not all about you. It's about God. Yeah. It's not what you think. It's about what God has to say. Yeah. Here, when you look at the example, Jesus is making an example uh, about the kingdom. Right. You're not going to just drag everything onto the kingdom. Talking about, I'm, I'm going to heaven anyway. Jones. You ain't getting in. So he says, well, where's your wedding garment, sir? Yes, sir. Yeah. The Bible says he was speechless. Let me let you know something. That when you stand before... The righteous judge. See, we think that when, when we die, we still got grace. Baby, grace is gone. Your dressing up time is over. Your preparation time is over. You had uh, uh, whatever years you had to learn the rules that you might win in this game of life. To make it to heaven. But no, you're going you to be ratchet as you want to be. You're going to be ragged as you want to be. And you are going to lose your reward. Yes, sir. My God. Once saved, always saved. Loose here. 
Here's an example that Jesus is making about heaven. Yeah. And he said, on the 12th verse, and he saith unto him, Friend, how comest thou? And he was speechless. 13. Then said the king to the servants, wait, 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 uh, to the deacons, <laughs> to the angels, yeah, yeah, yeah. to the other preachers, yeah, yeah. to the missionaries. He said, bind him hand and foot. Bind that devil. You're going to come up in my place and you're going you to wreck the joint. You, you're going to sit up in here like you, you all that in a bag of chips. You ain't coming up in here like that. He said, bind him hand and foot and take him away. And cast him into outer darkness. There, where there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. That ain't party time. That's Harville. That's Harville. But you know everybody, we go, everybody going to heaven. And I still say it to this day, all dogs don't go to heaven. That's right. That's right. No, uh-uh. Then it says, the last one, it says, For many are called, but few are chosen. God makes a general call. Wow. Yes, he do. For God so loved the world. Jesus said, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, I'll give you rest. There's a general call that goes out to the world. But all of a sudden, we disdain God. All you got to do is go and look at Proverbs 1. He talked about, I called you and I wanted to give you advice. But since you didn't want to take heed to my rule book, what I'll do is when you get into your calamity and when you face destruction, I'll laugh at you. I'll literally laugh at your calamity. And then you're going to ask, where is God? Bible says that the earth is his footstool and heaven is his throne. Well, uh, he on heaven, on the throne, laughing at you. Woohoo, big head. But we have a challenge to win. Paul said, what is going to separate us? There should be nothing that we allow to separate us from the love of God. If you fall, the saints said, get up, dust yourself off, and, and keep on, ask God to forgive you, keep on trucking. Somebody said the other day, I, I want to be like David, and I do. How could God say David was a man after his own heart? It's because David realized, God, when I've sinned, I need you to judge me. God, when, when I've sinned, I need you to come and clean me up. Wash me with hyssop thoroughly. Purge me, God. Get out all that junk out of my life. And you know what? We're still walking around with all this junk. But we, uh, I'm going to heaven anyway. Well, mama said I'm going to heaven. You better check yourself. Daddy said I'm, uh, you better check yourself. Amen. And so as I close, because my time is up. Yeah. As I begin to think about a challenge to win, uh -huh. I may have to go to it. As I think about the challenge to win. Uh -huh. As I sat up and I was thinking, and this is so impressed upon me because I love this, uh, this story that God brings about. Talks about it in Numbers. Numbers, everybody know it. Numbers, I believe, is 13. Am I in Numbers 13? Numbers 13. Numbers 13. What verse? Uh, I think the 30th verse. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm going to read this and we're going to quit. Right, I've given y'all enough words to last till Jesus comes. Numbers, the 13th chapter, somewhere around the 30th verse. It says, And Caleb stilled the people before Moses said, Let us go up at once and possess it. For we are well able to overcome it. But the men that went up with them, they went up with Joshua and Caleb, read the story. Uh, but the men that went up with him said, we are not able to go up against the people. And they are stronger than we. And they brought up an evil report of the land which they had searched unto the children of Israel, Israel saying, the land... Through which we have gone to search it is the land that eateth up the inhabitants, inhabitants thereof. And all the people that, that saw it 
saw it and it, I'm sorry, all the people that saw in it are men of a great statue. And they saw the giants, the son of Anak, which come of, which, which come of the giants, and we in our own sight as grasshoppers, and so were and and so we were in their sight. Here it is. That they, God says, I'm going to give you the land. And all of a sudden, uh, here you come, you strike out. You strike out. Why? Because uh, you see that it might be a little difficult, but you don't understand that the Bible declares we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. Through Jesus Christ, we already win. But here it goes. God says, I'm going to give you the land. And all of a sudden, uh, uh, we look like grasshoppers in our own sight, and they see us as grasshoppers, too. When I read this, I often wonder, did they go down and interview the ANATs <laughs> and ask them, do we look like grasshoppers in your sight? And then when you go on, you begin to read, uh, and then they talk about that they are well able. Only two came back. Two came back w w with, w w with, the, uh, with the word that I, I believe that we can go down and do it. But you have to read the lesson because when you look at it, the people start saying, uh, let us make a captain that can lead us back to Israel. Right. Isn't that what we're doing today? Yes, sir. We, we done hooked on, we done hooked up with, with some devil and we've gone back to where God has delivered us from. You want to be in the game, but you don't want to be where it takes to win the game. You want to go back to where it's easy. You, you want to go back to where it's carnal. Uh, but they said, no, 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 we're not going to do that. We can take the land. Yeah, and so in this, I close, is that a challenge to win? God is challenging us that we can win this race. Right. Yes, mm-hmm. God is challenging us that uh, we can take uh, the nation. Praise God. How are we going to do it, Jones? One person at a time. One get one. One minister to one. Uh, all the saints of God that are across the land, uh, across the sea, praise God, win one. And what we do is we begin to build up the kingdom of God. We begin to add to the kingdom, uh, and heaven begins to rejoice. Why? Because uh, uh, we are in a challenge to win. Yeah. So I hope I said something tonight that would encourage you that we're going to win this thing. Amen. So I guess I want to say, don't give up. Don't, don't, give don't up. throw in the towel. No, Hell or high water, sink or swim. We've got to make this thing. Jesus told us that we must be faithful, be thou faithful unto death. And if we be a faithful people, whoo, my God, he'll be a faithful God. And he will cause us to be victorious. We're victorious already. We just have to stop judging ourselves according to the world and judge ourselves according to God's word. And we would understand who we are in God. But as Elder Harrison said, we have to follow the rules in this game. In this game, we win when we follow the rules. Amen. This is Pastor Jones from the city of David. We're closing out our revival tonight. We pray that something was said each night that would encourage your hearts. And so as we normally say, amen, our prayer is that God's best would ever be yours. And we'll see you Sunday morning at 9 for Sunday school. And we'll see you at 1030. Praise God, this same station, this same uh, City of David station. God bless you until then. Have a wonderful night. Praise God.